Yeah. We're back! <laughs> We're back! Welcome to T. Philip G. and Shadow Podcast Show. That's right, I'm T. Philip G. and this is... Shadow. There you go, Shadow, right here. And we are doing our show number eight. Our show number eight, that's right. Uh, and it's uh, we're going to do a movie review of a movie we've just seen, uh, perhaps just a week ago, a week and a half ago. It's called Now You See Me, number two. Now You See Me, number two. And it's in theaters as we speak, as uh, we're doing this uh, podcast and video podcast. So, And this is uh, number two, obviously, of Now You See Me. And I just want to uh, welcome Shadow, by the way. How have you been doing, Shadow, by the way? I don't know, just sitting back, hanging out around. There you go. That's what I wanted. Sit back, hanging around, waiting for the next uh, our podcast and the uh, video podcast. Uh, and so what we want to do is do a quick uh, a review of Now You See Me number two. And let me just give you a quick plot because right now the show is premiering in uh, South Korea and is premiered earlier in the United States. And now they're going global, obviously. And uh, But we want to give our take or Now You See Me number two. And very quickly, um, I'm going to give you a little synopsis. Uh, and the film is directed by John Chu. Uh, at, John Chu is at the helm. The movie reconvenes most of the cast from the first go-around, and the key additions being Daniel Radcliffe. That's right. From Harry Potter. My gosh. And Lizzie Kaplan, the latter essentially taking the place of the departed Isla Fisher, joins Jesse Eisenberg, Woody Harrelson, and Dave Franco in The Four Horsemen, a hotshot Vegas act whose elaborate magic routines and exposés and built corporate scoundrels. Uh, by the end, compared to the first film, this one embraces the premise essentially essential of preposterous, although not necessarily to the winning effect. Case in point is the unwelcome arrival, arrival of the scene of Harold's character's evil twin. That's right, an evil twin of Woody Harrelson. It's a setup, and it's, that's hard to take uh, for the audience, and it's for Harrelson, Harrelson's character. It was hard to take, but at least it takes a chance. And then... Uh, but, and to wrap, uh, to wrap up this plot, uh, despite the so so what of the stories surrounding them, uh, those scenes build a certain level of anticipation, the expected piece of resistance that will cap the feature. It turns out to be as much about movie making as about anything in the story. And like the tumultuous plot with this shifting line between heroes and villains, whether that final illusion is worth all the work is another matter. So we went through two hours worth of Now You See Me plot. And at least the review says, I don't know if it was really worth it. But right now, I want to get Shadow's take, because we talked about it there, and we talked about it on our way back from the movie theater. And so now we're just ready to share uh, our quick thoughts. Or now you see see me number two and uh, shadow. What was the most surprising aspect of the film? Um, the way the guy fought with the illusions, um, the leader of the horsemen, the fifth dude, mm. and um, the way he just uses magic tricks, like in a way in an actual combat scenario. He moved uses magic tricks tricks in a combat scenario. What do you mean by that? Like, just using his illusions, like, moving around things, like, pretty much confusing them, doing things that, like, normal, normally you want to do in a fight. Did you believe his character, by the way, when he was doing all that? I, I don't, he, none of them had character development. Oh, that, that, now that was a good point. You had mentioned that earlier uh, about character development. Why is that so important in a film? Let's let's keep on the most surprising point. No, you brought up a good point because you know we talked about this before our before our, our, our production here. What? Why is character? And I wanted to ask this question, by the way. Why is character development so important, particularly in uh, this sequel of Now You See Me? So you can get a sense of who they are, rather than just saying, "Oh, that's that person. They did something." It actually feels like 
we have a reason to care about them. Wow! That's good. You, you, you want to care about them. And matter of fact, they added a new character in the uh, in the uh, for for the four horse, horsemen. As I indicated, uh, I think it was who was it? The the young lady, Lizzie uh, Kaplan, replaced one of the main characters. So you said character development was very important. And when she was brought on to the movie, matter of fact, she was giving a lot of jabs back and forth to the other guys. She was trying to make her. Or, uh, create her space. Did you think that was effective? No. <laughs> Why not? None of them got character development as much as they try to put it in there and there's no character development, no backstory, just like, oh, here we are. I'm the female of the movie, guys. There, that's true. And uh, for those of us who, who did not see Now You See Me number one, uh, we would, had no idea about the character development of really the four horsemen, and let alone the new person that was uh, involved with them. So, again, a very key point, character development. I like that. And then uh, what is the most disappointing aspect of the film to you, Shadow? Well, as we mentioned before, the character development, uh, <laughs> the lame twist, the lame twist, and the villain. I can't, I can't take Alfred and Harry Potter seriously. <laughs> now, say Alfred and Harry Potter. Alfred being played by Michael Caine and uh, Harry Potter being played by Daniel Radcliffe with a beard, may I say? <laughs> he, he looks so evil now with a beard. <laughs> Harry Potter with a beard and now evil. Star Trek rule. Anyone in a, in Star Trek rule. Anyone with a goatee is now evil. <laughs> There you go. Anyone with a goatee is now evil. So anyone with a goatee and a beard is even more evilness, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that was surprising. As a matter of fact, I, I, I was uh, confused with uh, Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe. I thought it was someone else. But in fact, <laughs> I said, I know that person. I know that person. It's Harry Potter. And it's also Alfred from Batman series. <laughs> Well, Michael Caine is a very accomplished actor, but seems like he always gets thrown. And then, of course, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> what you got to say about Morgan Freeman? It's going to be a Batman movie before long now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they team up somehow in, in so many movies. Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine is Batman number 12. <laughs> you know it's going to happen. <laughs> so, basically... Uh, with your take on the uh, surprising a aspect and the disappointing, should they make movie number three? Should they make a number three now you see me? No. I, I know they are, but there's no character development. I don't care about the characters. The story was lame. The, their illusions were weird and kind of like defied the laws of physics. <laughs> there is... There is no reason to care about this movie. And there's this one fake out scene that you think the movie's gonna end. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and they got these got these cup of tea. And they're like, we're gonna get back at the villain. Yeah. And like the music starts playing like the movie's about to end. Yeah. And then like as soon as that scene goes away, it's like, oh wait. And there's like another scene shows. Oh wait, the movie didn't end? I was, I was just about to get out yeah. of that seat right now. All right. I think the entire audience is about ready to get on. And it continues. It's like, what? I don't want to sit and do more of this. And one of the characters uh, of the Horseman, he was an FBI agent, and this FBI supervisor was trying to follow him around. They followed him all the way to England, and they were confused from day one. <laughs> like, I don't know why they take the FBI in such a bad light. I mean, there are there should be a lot more. Like, we don't take them seriously. Yeah, they're always like two steps. Like, Behind, yeah. they're like twenty steps ahead. Yeah, I thought that was ridiculous. So uh, basically, you say uh, perhaps not number three, but they are. They've already assigned uh, the director for number three. That's John Chu again. For uh, he's going to direct number three. So uh, I don't know what the plot will be. Uh, the direct direction. I, I give him props on the direction, but the plot and the character development. Has much to say, has much to, to improve upon. So, would you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, Shadow? Uh, I'll get it's it's for me, it's a five out of ten. It's, oh, okay, that's it's a C, good. it's a C minus, okay, right in between. <laughs> C minus, I like that. Oh, very good. So, uh, is there any other final remarks that you would like to say about the movie? <laughs> it was bland, it was forgettable. 
you wish you didn't see it, but you did. <laughs> and, you know, it's average. Oh, good job. That, was, that wraps it up. Outstanding review, movie review by Shadow uh, on podcast number eight. Uh, T. Phil G. and Shadow Podcast Show number eight. We have reviewed Now You See Me number two. As I said before, we're going to keep it short and tight and to the point. And we really appreciate all your feedback and all the followers on, on SoundCloud. We really appreciate as well as the YouTube followers as well. So that's our review of Now You See Me number two, a kind of C-minus by Shadow. And I want to say... Thank you for your uh, following, and is there any other final, final, final word you want to say, Shadow? What do you give it? <laughs> I give it a thumbs down. <laughs> I'm giving it, I give it the same thing you give it. You know, it's like sideways or somewhere right in the between. Really, it was, uh, you're, you're exactly on point, so I'm in full agreement with you. Your Outstanding. Your typical, bland, forgettable movie. <laughs> there you go. We will see you next time on the T. Philip G. Shadow Podcast Show. Thank you, everybody.